Let her rip, baby! What's up, Rito? Shade Tree Surgeon here at Burt's Barracuda. And man, let me tell you, the floor out here is full of brand new CVOs, brand new road glides and street glides, all the 2024s that you're seeing all over YouTube. There is brand new glides in all the brand new colors. And whether you like the new colors or the new look of the shark nose or not, I guess that's up to you, but big fan of making baggers chrome again. And even though I've heard the new street glides and road glides are actually way more affordable than they've ever been, eh, affordable is a sliding scale. If you got enough cash to drop on one of those things, go ahead and do it, man. Birds will take care of you. Whenever I come up to Birds, I come looking for something a little more in my price range and they never disappoint. Birds is one of the few places that takes in pretty much anything Thing in trade. They've got multiple cars on the lot right now for like 500 bucks because they took them in on trade. They take guitars, knives, baseball cards, you name it. As long as they don't have to feed it, they'll take it in on trade. So it's one of the few Harley Davidson dealerships where you'll find a pretty awesome selection of really affordable metrics on the floor and that's where we're starting. We got everything from the 250cc V-Twin V-Star, brand new 1800cc Goldwing. I'd be real curious to what they traded that for. Anyway, Let's check these bikes out. Ah, uh, it's a baby! We're gonna start today's test rides off with the other, other white meat. I know I said they got a lot of metrics here, but they also usually have a victory or two lying around that somebody's traded in. And this is a pretty good example of victory. 2017 highball. I'm not sure what the last year of victory was, but this is getting close to it. In fact, I should know that. Let me look up that right now. You know what? It is actually the last year. I didn't want to say it was the last year, but apparently 2017 was the last year. I think that's a cool feather in the cap to have a bike if you're into victories and you like them to have the last year ever produced. 2017 highball, they're getting nine grand for it. The longest time, I really didn't care about victories just because they weren't really my thing stylistically, although I know a lot of people out there love them. And then I rode one and I realized what I was missing. These bikes haul ass. Now it's not going to be as fast as a brand new Lowrider ST, but stock out of the gate, these things are pretty freaking quick, man, and it'll beat most 107s, I'd imagine. They're getting nine grand for this one, the last year of a legend. The only other American motorcycle manufacturer to really stand up to Harley Davidson in recent years anyway, and of course, they're Indian now, and Indian's doing a pretty good job, but it's all just Polaris, isn't it? And it was kind of sad to see Victory go by the wayside for basically just a name change with Indian, because there was a lot of guys who really, really believed in the brand and really loved their Victory motorcycles, and it's kind Kind of sad to see that company abandon them like that it is what it is baby you can't stop the wheels of time though you can still get this bike and relive the glory days all right let's see what this thing sounds like i like that The last of a dead breed. Now, I don't keep it up enough with the news to know if Victory was in major trouble before they made the switch to Indian or if they were still doing good. This motorcycle, like I said, stylistic, not exactly my style, but it's undeniable, man. It's an 1800cc V-twin, makes 100 horsepower. If you like this look, it's got the look. This one's got 8,700 miles on it. They're getting a little more than a dollar per mile because they're selling this one for nine grand. Hard to think about the looks of anything when you twist that throttle though. God, this thing has just a freaking phenomenal sound. That always surprised me because I'm so used to riding you know, other V-Twins that kind of sign off right when this thing comes to life. Pretty normal, like in the first few thousand RPM, and then right when you would expect something else is about to start going like, all right, I've had enough, you're getting close to the rev limiter. This thing just pops right to life. 
wonder how much influence the new Indian engines actually take from this old Polaris mill. Because for all accounts and purposes, everyone said this was a really good motor, man. Now its upgradability was kind of in question, but for a lot of guys, they don't want to tinker with it. They want that thing to be ready to go out of the box, throw some exhaust and an air cleaner on it, quick ECU flash, and you're done. Your bike's ready to go. It already makes the horsepower it should. Kind of been the thing that everyone always talks mess on Harley about is the fact that the bikes leave horsepower in the engine for you to find at home. Go like, hey, you should be paying for everything. If you're paying that price, you should get everything. So everyone else is kind of just like, hey, this is an optimized engine. It's pretty much ready to go. So the people who love that about Harley love it. The people who hate it, hate it. You're not going to make everyone happy. I personally love to tinker, but that doesn't mean that this ain't a great bike. <laughs> ah, you know what, man? undeniable and even though this bike really isn't my style not for me i get it it's for somebody but it's just not for me that doesn't mean i dislike victory as a whole there is one victory that i really really want and i've always got my wandering eye on the look for and that's the the most hated victory of course the victory vision if i ever find a victory vision at the right price i'm definitely jumping on one of those but nine g's for this is pretty affordable and like i said i ain't making any more of them so if you want to get into a victory this would have been your last chance. It's funny, I always got a soft spot for underdogs, and while Victory was around, whoo, I really didn't pay that much attention to them because they weren't really like my thing. But now that they're gone, I find myself liking Victory more. It's funny how that works, huh? You'll miss me when I'm gone. That's just me though. I kind of always root for an underdog. And now that underneath the ground, dog, they're dead. Now I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I kind of see what I kind of see what people liked about Victory. I kind of like them now that, that you can't get them anymore. Uh, that's enough on the high ball. We got a couple other cool bikes to ride. Although the bike that's next up on my list, while also a V-twin, uh, its entire displacement wouldn't even fill half of one of the victory cylinders wait math okay i'm not very good at math it would fill half of one of the victory cylinders okay that's what i meant cut me some slack here all right i graduated early in the 10th grade breathtaking i shall call him mini me and now for something completely different cue the clown music Am I gonna fit in the frame with this bike? <laughs> the Yamaha V-Star 250 is certainly not something that we're used to seeing in the American streets. Now they're a little more common over in Europe, but even over there, you normally see a 250 or small displacement bike like this in a single cylinder, or at least a parallel twin. The fact that it's in a V-twin configuration is pretty neat to me. Just activates all my neo Tenny responses. Freaking adorable. Like this, it's almost a pocket bike. If you're small and you're just getting into bikes, it's cool. You know, I think that you would eventually outgrow but that doesn't mean it isn't an awesome place to start and they're asking 2400 bucks for it and it'll pretty much as long as you take care of it always be worth about 2400 bucks as long as it's in good shape so even if you got it and had it for a year you more than likely could sell it for pretty much just exactly as much as you have in it but the really cool part about the v-star 250 is the engine and yeah it's only a 250 cc engine but it's a v-twin and just something about that and maybe it's just because i'm an american something about the fact that it's a v-twin even though this thing literally comes up to my knees the fact that it's a v-twin that just makes it so freaking cool this has the stock exhaust on it but even still it sounds pretty neat I'm sure I can find a clip online but I'd be very interested to see what this thing sounds like with open exhaust might be tiny but it's still covered in chrome baby yeah it's this little miniature v-twin 250 cc's and yeah i'm gonna look like a dog humping a football on this thing but i'll tell you this right now it doesn't matter someone will correct me if i'm wrong but i think they even made all the way to 125 cc v-twins i'm not sure let her rip baby <laughs> dude it goes good enough man you know, you're not gonna set any land speed records, but hey, baby, we hit ramming speed. 
Immediately I get on something as ridiculous as this little 250cc V-twin and all I want to do is like ride across the country on it because it's so funny. Because it's just so unlikely. It's so funny. It's such a little underdog, man. 250cc's and they made it a V-twin. Wouldn't take up but half of one of the Victory cylinders, but here we go. It still moves me down the road. Even if you were getting something like this as a pit bike, you know, if you like Groms and you like that kind of stuff, you want to do small bore, small CC stuff. It's cheaper than a Grom. It's cheaper than a Trail 125. You, know, you put some bags or a milk crate on it, something like that. Hey, baby, you got a V-twin chromed out pit bike instead of a single cylinder Grom. I don't know how it would be on the interstate, but it certainly can keep up with traffic and it's not uncomfortable, believe it or not. I'm 5'12 and a half and I feel fine on this thing. Although I'm sure anybody like four foot four and up would not have a problem at all on this bike. Pretty crazy that the ergonomics on this motorcycle work both for a 5'12 and a half giant like myself and somebody who is legally a little person. Oh, dude, I kind of like it, man. In a sea of Grom and scooter pit bike, Bikes, this one would stand out. If you're at the races or you're camping, you're in your RV or whatever, and you got a little pit bike to get around and go to the store on, dare to be different, baby. This one would be perfect for that or teaching your kids how to ride a motorcycle or a bunch of other stuff too. This is a really neat little bike for 2,500 bucks, man. You are hairy like animals. Be honest, how many of you guys down there in the audience right now are here because the first video you saw was me just talking massive amounts of crap about the Triumph Bobber. I definitely had to eat crow on that one. I've ridden one of these things before and I actually freaking loved it. I initially made fun of the styling and I still kind of like the whole fake soft tail thing kind of gets to me a little bit, but when you get up and close and personal with these Triumphs, the attention to detail is huge and it looks so much nicer in person than it did in the ads. Now, the ad was still straight cringe don't get me wrong i was still cringy as hell and i don't feel bad talking crap about that i still sing i'm a wanted man whenever i see a try hard out on the streets okay it's undeniable that this is a cool bike with a couple of questionable things done to it i don't know about these like galvanized fence post exhaust right here i probably would just throw those turnouts away and just run straight open exhaust or put some chrome tips on it or something i don't know who paid a lot of money for this bike it's nine thousand now from burt's but that's definitely not what they cost brand new and if i paid what this thing cost brand new i wouldn't have been putting those galvanized fence posts on the end of the exhaust though i'm sure this thing's going to give the victory a run for its money as far as being loud oh yeah this is going to be loud Dude. <laughs> Boys, they're gonna know you're coming on this one. <laughs> Damn, dude. Believe it or not, the sound is not actually that bad on the bike. Although I do feel bad for anybody behind me or to the side of me, but, but once you start rolling on that throttle, that sounds like a them problem, not a me problem. That D cell, baby. God, it was such, I think, personally, I know some people like the sound of the 360 degree V-twin. I think Triumph going to 270 was the best move ever. This motor sounds so much better. Yeah, dude, this thing is a freaking terror. I think this is kind of like the perfect setup on it too, these little mini apes. It just works really well. This thing freaking rips, dude. <laughs> this freaking 1200cc Bonneville engine they built, man, it makes me want a scrambler because the scrambler and this engine were kind of the same thing, the high torque engine, so they kind of perform the same, and it, I really like it. Yeah, that is a good engine. Even though, again, not exactly my style, it's hard to deny that this isn't a good looking bike with these mini apes and the solo seat and everything like that. I'm not, again, I'm not usually a solo seat guy, but they did, they made it look good. I gotta admit it. I had to eat a little bit of crow on that one when I saw it in person. Although I think where the Bonneville Bobber really shines is if you're short, man. This is just 
one of the ways to have a really fast, very powerful, very cool looking cruiser motorcycle if you're like five feet tall. Shay has ridden one of these with no problem whatsoever. And she's four foot 11. Now the Bonneville Bobber is big time short person friendly. Don't think just because it's short people friendly though that you're getting on a motorcycle that doesn't haul ass. Like if you're gonna go like, oh, I'm gonna get this for my wife who just started riding so she's comfortable and can put her feet on the ground. Like be aware of what you're buying. This thing is a freaking hot rod, dude. And while I sure you could make it your first motorcycle if you're responsible enough, you could get yourself out of shape in this thing real quick. Yeah, it might be beginner friendly height wise, but that is not a beginner power band. This thing hauls the mail, boys. Like I said, every time I ride one of these engines, it makes me wish I had the scratch to get a Triumph Scrambler. And I came real, real close to getting her two wheel scrambler when she gave it up. That just wasn't in the cards for me. Maybe one day, but unfortunately, while the bobbers don't keep their value super well, this one's nine grand right now. The Triumph Scramblers, ah, those really hold their value. So I don't think I'm finding a cheap one anytime soon. If it was mine, I'd get rid of that galvanized fence post on the exhaust and put some nice cocktail shakers on it. Those MGO cocktail shakers, this would still be really, really loud. I'm doing pretty good today. I'm riding bikes I love, but none that I'm actually tempted by. Like this Triumph Bobber, awesome motorcycle. I'm not really tempted to buy it because it's just really not my thing. Doesn't mean it's not your thing. This is a righteous bike, man. Awesome bar hopper. This is a bike night bike, man. An in-town bike. Although I'm sure there are people out there. In fact, I know one of them who built sissy bar racks for them and traveled with them. You can tour on a Triumph Bonneville Bobber. You're just gonna have to try a little harder than most people. But again, not really my style. Now this was a Scrambler 1200. I'd be asking some questions I probably didn't want to know the answer to. But if you want to ask questions about this bike, go ahead and give Bert's Barracuda a call. Make sure you tell him old Shade Tree sent you, all right? Yeah, bikes I don't actually want to buy. Those are the safest bikes in the world for me to test ride. So now let's go test ride something dangerous. No, 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 no. Danger's my middle name. Yeah, this one's real dangerous. It'd be hard for me to say if there's a bike that would tempt me more at Burt's Barracuda right now than this Goldwing. And the price they got it at, 13.9, I think these things go for like almost 20 grand brand new. And this is basically brand new. This is very, very tempting. I almost don't even want to ride it, but we're gonna, because I ain't leaving without test riding this Goldwing. I have put a few miles on one of these before, but I haven't ridden one in a while. It does have the DCT, which I initially was very trepidatious about. Every new Goldwing is always the best Goldwing they've ever made. And out of everything that Honda makes, the Goldwing never misses. Let me say that again. The Goldwing never misses. Honda wouldn't let it miss. Every single one that comes out, whenever they do a next generation of Goldwing, it's always the baddest thing on the road. For some people anyway. Some dudes don't go for the whole freaking spaceship look and you know, this white on black look for this thing, it really does be looking like a NASA shuttle. This could be the only bike you need and it could probably be the last bike you ever buy. And that goes for almost any Goldwing, but especially these newer ones. All right, finally, a motorcycle where my dad Force Ones are more at home. I'm still grabbing for the clutch on these things. All right, let's remember how to do this. I gotta put it in drive. Always a little weird taking off at first with no clutch, but, but basically you kind of just use the rear brake as a clutch. <laughs> yeah, you stop missing that clutch real quick as soon as this thing starts banging through the gears. And you can put it in a manual paddle shifter mode too. I got it in tour mode right now, so it's not downshifting super aggressively, but we could change that. There we go, sport mode, baby, that's what we want. You have to like physically restrain yourself from grabbing a clutch when you roll up to a stoplight, it's funny. This thing's only got 4,100 miles on it. That's wild, it really is like brand new. Taking over $1,000 off for each 1,000 miles it has on it at 13.9. All right, do a U-turn here while holding the rear brake. Uh, I definitely have to get used to it, man. Wouldn't have to get used to that, though. <laughs> 
really holds those shifts in sport mode. That's freaking cool. What else is there to say about the new Goldwing that hasn't already been said? It's the best motorcycle made. End of story, period. It does everything. Now, are the looks for everybody? Is the way it sounds for everybody and stuff like that? Yeah, the best motorcycle in the world, of course, is up to you. Motorcycles are, that's the cool thing about them is they don't have to be perfect to be the best. But if you were to measure everything up, like facts and figures and all that, the Goldwing is the best motorcycle in the world, in my opinion, anyway. And this Goldwing could be your Goldwing. Please, let it be your Goldwing. Because again, this is the most dangerous bike at Birch for me to ride because it's the one I want to ask questions to that I really don't want to know the answers to. DCT works so well, and in sport mode, it holds the shifts, man. It really is something else. Down shifts for you. Oh, it'd be hard, dude. I'd be hard not having a clutch. I think I'd want one with a clutch, but God, Damn, this motorcycle is freaking amazing. Haven't I said that about all of them? Didn't I say they're all freaking amazing drinking game? That's what everybody says, new drinking game. Take a shot every time I say, it's like freaking amazing. I don't, I don't know what to tell you on that one, man, because <laughs> it is. As I said, this thing's dangerous. Let me, let me park this thing. I really do not need to be riding this motorcycle around. As I back it up, y'all, I'm mean, gonna go, hey, that thing has reverse, you know? Well, I don't know how to turn it on on these bikes, so for all intents and purposes, for me, it doesn't have reverse. <sighs> That is a freaking really nice bike, man. Walk away, Josh. Walk away. Birch has a lot of brand new Harleys. Everybody and their brothers releasing the new 2024 Road Glide and Street Glide tests and reviews and nothing against them, but I feel like I don't really have anything to add to that. So I'm not gonna be test riding one in today's video. Even though I could, they're sitting there on the floor. They got plenty of them. If you're looking for one, get it from Birch. They will fly you in from out of state. Ask for the shade tree deal. They will fly you in on their dime and you can ride that motorcycle home. And even if you don't wanna fly in, if you buy the motorcycle from Birch, if you know what you want, they'll actually ship anywhere in the lower 48 for absolutely free. It doesn't mean I don't like the new Harleys. I think they're awesome. I actually, I like the updates. I think they look really good. Maybe, maybe I like the old fairing a little bit more, but I'm sure the new one will grow on me. They always end up growing on you after a little while. But when I come to Burt's, this is the stuff I like to show off because at the end of the day, Burt's Barracuda is actually one of the best places in America to buy a used metric bike. They don't try to make a lot of money off of them. And in most cases, they don't make any money at all. They're there's of course the tax tag and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, they usually sell these bikes for pretty much whatever they gave the guy for it. So if you want one, jump on it fast. Like I said, you're very rarely will you find a better price on a used metric motorcycle, or I guess um, alternative American motorcycle. Very hard to find a better price than you will over at Burt's Barracuda. They like to give people a chance to get on bikes, man. They sell these metrics for a good price, what they gave the people for trade-ins, because at the end of the day, and this comes from Burt's mouth himself. He doesn't care what you ride and as long as your knees are in the breeze. If you got a good deal on a metric bike from Burt, stands the reason if you want a Harley one day, you'll probably go back to him. Funny how that works, huh? Treating your customer right and being nice to him and giving him a good deal gets people to come back to your business. Crazy. Doesn't seem like that would be that hard of a lesson to learn for a lot of other Harley Davidson dealerships out there. Anyway, that's going to about do it for this one. I appreciate you guys hanging out. A lot of people say they love these videos. I try not to do them too often because I don't know man i just like doing weird stuff and i don't like to be repetitive but i do have a lot of fun test riding all these bikes so i never mind doing it i just don't ever want to get repetitive on the channel but everyone always says they really like this style of video and seeing me test ride all these bikes and maybe i'll test ride the 2024 street glide and road glide i don't really know everyone else has done the reviews on them. i feel like i've got nothing to add and it just would be redundant if i did one too but that's gonna about do it for this one y'all until next time crashing through the sky comes a fearful Cry, shade tree, army, shade tree, army, armies of the night, evil taking flight, shade tree, army, shade tree, army, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree, army, shade tree, army. Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree, army, shade tree, army? They never give up, they never say die, walking tall with banners high. 
Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world. <laughs>